Okay, so in this video, we are going to be working with Gatsby by creating a blog using Markdown files and GraphQL to pull in that information. Now, this is actually pretty easy once you understand exactly what's going on. However, if you were to fire up Gatsby with anything other than the uh, blog sort of starter kit or starter file, you might be kind of confused as to where to go or what to do, right? So what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to be showing you each step of the way and we're gonna be talking about why we're doing it because there are definitely some things that uh, you might maybe see coming or not see coming or or whatever. So the first thing we're going to be doing to get started here is to bring in a plugin. Now the plugin we need to bring in is going to be a source plugin. Now what that means is a, a source plugin is basically a plugin for Gatsby that allows you to create nodes or essentially grab in data from things. And in this case, that's going to be Markdown. So the source plugin that we need to use first is going to be the Gatsby source file system because we're going to be pulling in files from our file system, not from some sort of external API. Also keep in mind, I'll be making this repo available. So if you need this code, I will post it in the description of the video. So what we have here, um, is basically my I term. I'm in the root of this project and we can simply just do npm install hyphen hyphen save. And this is going to be a Gatsby hyphen source, right? Because this is a source plugin. And then the plugin name is file system, file system. Okay. And we need to uh, let this install. But as this is installing, we can head to our Gatsby config.js. Okay, you can see I have my SAS plugin from the last video and the helmet video that, or the helmet plugin that came with Gatsby. Let's check out the C. Okay, package was installed correctly. Now we can add another comma here. Now instead of having a just a string that says Gatsby plugin or Gatsby source file system, we're going to have an object. Now this object is basically allows you to add in plugins with a little bit more information than just, hey, start using this plugin. Uh, for that, we need a property called resolve, which is going to tell you what actual plugin we're using. In this case, it's Gatsby source, oh, got to spell that. Okay, source file system, okay. Hopefully none of that was spelled incorrectly. It looks fine to me at glance here. And next we want to have our options, which is also going to be an object, okay? Inside of this object, we can give it a path, right? Here's the files in the file system where our markdown files are going to be located. So we want to give this a path. And inside of this, well, we'll actually want to use backticks for this. We can have a value here that just says underscore, underscore, dir name. Okay. So dir name is going to get us in this case, it's going to get us the current directory that the project is in forward slash SRC, right? Because our source folder over here and wherever you're going to be storing your posts. Now I'm going to be storing them just within pages for this example. You can change this if you'd like. So we're going to say pages and next we're going to have a name name, which is just simply going to be not pagers. This isn't the nineties. Okay. Pages, check it out. Okay. So as you can see here, we're not really doing a whole lot more than just initializing a plugin. Like we were up top here. Uh, essentially we're initializing a plugin and we're giving it an option with a path of where our files are going to live and a name. Okay. So check that out. Now the next thing we need is what's called a transformer plugin, which basically takes some sort of data format, right? It could be anything from like JSON or YAML or Markdown or whatever, and basically transforms it into information that Gatsby can query against in GraphQL. So really what we want to do is add a plugin here that allows us to use uh, our Markdown files as essentially something we can query off of. So back in my terminal here, I'm going to npm install hyphen hyphen 
save and this time is Gatsby. And if you guessed it correctly, we're gonna be using Transformer because this is a Transformer plugin. So Transformer hyphen, and then the plugin name is Remark because we're using a package called Remark to get to that information. Now I should mention that we could do the same thing with the Resolve um, with options because there are additional plugins you can pass to this Remark um, Transformer plugin and it can really make your your entire markdown thing a little bit more powerful, whether that's manipulating images and stuff like that. That's out of the scope of this particular video. So what we're going to do is simply just import this plugin as uh, gets, I'm gonna copy and paste this to be honest because writing this out twice, no thanks. Okay, so Gatsby Transformer Remark is our plugin in our Gatsby config. Okay, like I said, there are some options where you could add in additional plugins, but I'm not going to bother with that. Now that I have our config set up, I wanna get our Gatsby site running. If you already have your site running, stop your site with Control C and then start your site again. So we can do Gatsby develop, and this is going to get our site up and running. Okay, as you can see at my local host port 8000, nothing crazy from what we had before, purple, Gatsby, LUT, yes, hello people. Okay, so that should be all good. You can see we're getting no errors about any of our config or plugins, which is all good. If you are getting errors, please address those. Chances are maybe you typed something wrong, it didn't install something, or you have an issue with your actual text in your config file you can compare against mine in the github repo or on here okay so let's check it out the very first thing we want to do is start to add our pages before we can find them right so what we want to do is head to our pages folder and we can create a new folder and this folder is going to be essentially our blog post right whatever is contained in here will be our our markdown files and images and whatever for our blog post. So what's a good way to differentiate your blog posts? Well, uh, one of the you know blogs are typically by date when they're released, so a good way to do that would be by the date of the post. Keep in mind here that Gatsby does not care about your naming convention here. It doesn't care what you may name this folder, but it makes sense, especially for blog posts. So you'll see this example done a lot, but uh, at the end of the day, it's just because it makes sense. Okay. So let's do 08. I believe today is the 24th. Okay. And then 2017. Okay, and then we want another hyphen, obviously, because it's a folder name, we don't want any spaces. And we can just say, first hyphen blog or whatever you want your blog post to be titled. It doesn't really care about this folder structure, like I said. And next, let's go ahead and create a new file within that folder, simply just named index.md, okay? This is going to be the main markdown file inside of our blog post. Okay, so inside of our markdown file, this is going to be just like any other markdown file with one exception. We take a concept here uh, that you'd be probably familiar with if you've worked in Jekyll, where we have front matter. Now our front matter can be differentiated here by three hyphens or three dashes, whatever you'd like to say, and then we can give this some properties. Now these properties will be able to be accessed in our JavaScript. So we can say, let's say we want a property that is path, which the path can simply just be first post. And then this path can be anything you'd like, but it's going to be the path at which you're trying to access your files. And then next we can have a title, which can be the title of your blog post. So we can just say first blog post. Now we can end our front matter by having three more hyphens. Now from here, we have the ability to have normal markdown. So we can have a basic pound sign or hash and just say, hello, exclamation point. Okay, save that. And now we have our very first blog post, although it's not exciting, right? Okay, so at this very point in time, if obviously we head to first post like this, we're going to get a 404. Now hopefully that changes in a minute here after we add some stuff. 
So the first thing I want to do is create a template for our blog post. Keep in mind this isn't like a page like these pages here and it's not necessarily a layout. So let's go ahead and have a new folder which is just templates. Okay. Okay, so next inside of templates, we're going to go ahead and just create a new file, which can just be, uh, we'll just have this be post.js. This can be whatever you'd like. Post makes, um, makes a lot of sense to me. Now we're going to do our standard stuff like importing, uh, not typing importing, but type, but import React from React. We're going to import helmet from React hyphen helmet. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is export a template. So we're going to use export default function and then the word template. Okay, this is going to be our template. So it's going to be a function here and inside of this function is going to accept an object like that. Okay. Now next we're going to have our parentheses here and inside of our parentheses we're going to have an object and then simply just the word data. Basically what this is going to be doing is it's going to be a prop that will be injected by the GraphQL query. So this is going to be where all of our information is going to come in from our GraphQL query and then can be rendered in our template. So these are just arguments in an object here. You know what we could do is have this be like this if this looks more like a JavaScript function to you. Um, we'll be expanding on this later, but as you can see here, this is a standard JavaScript function, nothing crazy here. Now the data that we want to be using is going to be stored inside of this data object as data.markdownRemark, because we're using remark, if you remember, to pull in our markdown data. So we can simply just come in here and uh, bring that out using our object deconstruction here, and we can just say markdown remark and that variable uh, data dot markdown remark will be reassigned as a post variable as in just our blog post right so this is going to equal data if you haven't seen this syntax before it's the equivalent of doing const post is equal to data dot markdown remark where we're simply pulling out the markdown remark from data and assigning it to post okay so now that we have that, let's go ahead and return something, right? This is a React component, so we need to return. And now we want to return simply just div. And inside of this div, uh, you, you can lay out your blog post however you like. But a good way to start off here is simply by just having an H1. So inside of here is where vocabulary becomes important. Uh, I mentioned before that the top of our markdown file here was the front matter. Now front matter is something that you'll recognize from Jekyll if you're coming from Jekyll. Okay, so we have front matter. So our data inside of our post is actually accessible via our post dot front matter. And we have access now to every single variable in our front matter. You'll remember that we had path and title. So we can use title. You can set anything you want in your front matter and you'll have access to it here. Okay, so we now are basically outputting this H1. Obviously the page isn't gonna work still because we don't have any sort of data coming in. And uh, basically we haven't registered our pages yet. Uh, before we get to registering our pages, we're going to actually write the GraphQL query. Now, if you don't know a ton about GraphQL, I would highly recommend the how to GraphQL resource. There's videos and blog posts and all sorts of stuff to get you up to speed. But for the most part, I'll do my best to explain what's going on here. So we're basically going to export a constant function. And this is just going to be our post query. And the post query is going to be equal to GraphQL and we're going to have back ticks like this. If you've ever used styled components, you would recognize this sort of function back tick style. Okay, so next here we have a query, which is going to be a function. We're just going to say blog post by 
path which accepts a property which accepts one argument which is dollar sign path and we're going to say that path needs to be a string okay so dollar sign path colon string exclamation point so now inside of our query we're actually going to be searching for our given posts or our given post uh, singular by the path in the front matter to do that we can do mark down remark remark okay like that and inside of this query we're looking for the front matter okay and then the value of the front matter we're actually making sure that the path of the front matter that is so path colon we're looking for the path of the front matter is equals eq to dollar sign path which is the path coming in to our blog posts by path so the query is looking for a given blog post it's getting the path and then it's finding a markdown file using markdown remark where the front matter dot path is equal to dollar sign path okay let's go ahead and have a bracket here and then we're going to wrap up the rest of our query by telling graphql what exact information we want now we want the html which will be the interior of the blog post and then we can have a comma and then we want the front matter and then we can have brackets and inside of the front matter we want the path uh, and the title. Now I messed up this query, I had a comma in here, so make sure you're, if you're used to writing JavaScript object stuff, GraphQL, uh, we don't have commas here. So HTML, front matter, path, title, all like this. Okay, so this is our query, this is hitting our, our files and saying, hey, which of these markdown files has the same path that we're looking for? Okay, it should be straightforward. Okay, so that seems like a good place to take a break. We've made some progress here. So pick up in the next video as we continue creating our blog in Gatsby.